Hi everybody, Frankie V here with our final episode of uh, playing with power tools uh, as far as this channel goes. As I'll be moving all future uh, whatnots and how to's over to our official channel and I'll be sure to post the uh, URL to that uh, in our comment section down below there. Uh, for those of you who are interested in keeping up to date as to the ongoing development of River Terror, uh, that would be the place to, ha to uh, keep your eye on as uh, more and more of our development team starts to move um, behind the scenes videos and stuff to that channel as well as to uh, uh, updates as we progress towards uh, the uh, ultimate conclusion or conclusion ha, the ultimate uh, uh, that will be uh, Urban Terror HD so uh, in this episode what I'll be covering is how to make picture perfect uh, uh, normal maps using the render to uh, texture feature in 3ds Max and try not to stray too far off uh, as to some of the ideas that you can do it, you, you make use of the uh, render texture feature. But the uh, idea behind it all is to use um, 3ds Max to uh, render out a uh, picture perfect height map. We'll get to that in a minute. And then use a program like uh, XNormal or Crazy Bump to actually extract the normal map information from that height map. Now, a height map is just basically a data set from 0 to 1. 0 being black, 1 being white. So, so everything else in between is, is calculated based on, on those differentials in, 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 in values. So, uh, being, uh, you know, taking a, uh, photo, a uh, photo sourced image for example isn't going to produce the kind of results that you're looking for as it's uh, as it's chaotic uh, the information is just just too mixed up with between the shadowing and the uh, lighting effect that's on the material surfaces which is what you don't want so the result of that of just extracting from a photograph uh, as in like a photo normal is uh, it's kind of a band-aid type of solution uh, but it's not really what you would consider a normal map as, as what the result will look like is something that's been shrink map wrapped or whatever, as opposed to the idea that what you want to do is create a differential in height of the object surface itself and then include other materials uh, or textures and materials down the road that, uh, that can be applied to that surface as being, let's say, a lot more physically correct. Now, in an engine like uh, Unreal 4, this has become um, something of a rather important because it does use physics-based materials. In other words, um, materials that are are not derived of the real world, but are calculated based on, on a value. So this is what uh, where something like the height map being converted to a normal map um, uh, uh, comes into uh, into being. As, uh, and the idea that to, to really to be able to define a material, to define surface, you need uh, specular, you need uh, which, uh, you need uh, uh, glossiness, you need uh, obviously a normal or bump map or a height map uh, to properly define uh, the surface qualities as in within a real-time video game. So uh, if you're running down a hall, for example, a light splash on one surface won't jive with the light splash on the other surface taken on a photo like there's no two suns so <laughs> you got a sun effect on one side and a sun effect on the other side as to materials it looks it just doesn't look correct as opposed to letting the engine handling the uh the lighting solution and calculations based on 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 a predefined let's say data set aka height map or normal map so what we want to do is uh be able to create uh based on on the need uh, what it is uh, what is our particular application in mind that we have as far as being able to generate these types of materials using the render 2 so this is just you know a tip of the iceberg and I'm going to try to avoid going off a subject off a topic here but the render to texture feature can certainly generate uh, like some really serious high-end um, uh, 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 materials as far as textures goes that doesn't contain the type of information that would lead to the artificial sense of uh, of something that was just uh, taken with a camera. So moving forward here, uh, I think we covered the, the basic ideas. Um, grid uh, front view. <coughs> what I like to work with is a canvas as to uh, how things will be laid out as far as my as far as my um, as hi my height map goes. Um, as to relative distances between the different objects. Uh, since we're working in a three-dimensional space, there's really no such thing as, as, as measurement, as, you know, 
if we make a box that it is has a has a a physical size uh, it within a three-dimensional space except for items that are around it that are relative to that size so a box could be something like uh you know something as big as a building or it can be something as small as a, to as a toy box and then everything else that's kind of built up around it is relative to that size the only time size comes in is when we tell uh tell the world that that we we're using this type of measurements now there's all sorts of types of measurements but uh, I won't get into that uh, kind of getting off the beaten track but basically it's a form of a means of being able to maintain a a relative connection between um, between one item and another when there's no real set means of being able to do this as this environment being uh, a real world space so in this case what I want to do is I want to be able to to create a relative size between um, a planar object and the material that I'm going to be assigning it to. So in this case, 2048 by 2048, and we don't like pink. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of like this gray here. This is a 50% gray, so it kind of uh, jives with everything else. So this gives us a, a practical measuring system as far as placing objects onto our target resolution. So anything that's outside this plane is uh, not relative to this image plane. Okay, so uh, let's create a, uh, uh, some some shapes on, on the surface here. Um, this, for example, uh, we'll, we'll create a, move this on there, a simple circle uh, as a shape. So you can see here, if I go to, uh, to my stack information here, it's enabled in render, enabled in viewport, uh, I have a volume space. Let's make this a little bit more rounded of 35 with 12 sides. <coughs> uh, auto smooth is kind of turned on. And I have this set to um, uh, interpolation to um, adaptive. So if I turn that off, for example, you can see it gets kind of, you know, the quality uh, uh, of its shape is kind of lost. So by having adaptive on, if you're using spline shapes to create different types of patterns or what have, ever have you, you. If you turn on adaptive, it will always be a smooth uh, a result, <coughs> as opposed to choppy as in number of steps. Okay, so that gives us w one object, a circle on our uh, on my canvas here. Now to kind of create a differential between the two shapes, I'll make just another simple object, and we'll call that uh, more or less done as far as oh, the hard work of of creating uh, uh, displacements onto our canvas. Now the thing about uh, our displacement here is our spline shape is is snapped to the grid as long as along with our with our uh, our canvas. Let's uh, kind of call that canvas just to keep it clear. <coughs> and it's cutting through the plane. Now, uh, a height map cannot distinguish between uh, uh, concave uh, or convex to objects on the screen as to height differential. So it has to kind of be you have to be able you be able to planar the image to our canvas surface. So this information that's in behind it here is lost as far as uh, as um, displacement goes. So we go to top view. What I'm going to do is just take that item there, uh, convert it over to an edible poly. Oops. Um, let's take everything actually. And we'll convert everything over to an edible poly. We'll go to our top view. And with these two items, this, selecting this item, I'm going to attach it to that item over there. Select by face. Select all that back face information, and it's gone. Okay, so back to our forward view, to our perspective view, and now if we render this out, we just land it up here. You can see we have two ring shapes that are going to define our height, the height of our map, as to our canvas, using our canvas as the uh, as the surface or planar surface that it's uh, being extruded from. So uh, let's go ahead and say we're done all that we want to do and uh, we want to start finalizing stuff uh, we'll select our canvas just as, as our point of reference select our circles and attach that to it now if we render it out <coughs> it adopts whatever uh, color information I have up here as part of the connection uh, regardless of the type of materials that are assigned to it at the moment there's no materials assigned to this at all they're just uh, planar objects without uh, surface information now, um, moving on, um, we need to kind of st 
start with the chicken and egg kind of idea here. So if I open up the editor, you can see that when we have our set based on our settings for our, sh our shapes, um, they automatically generate UV mapping coordinates. So if we create uh, toruses or whatever, or this, that, and the other thing in here, this is how it's going to tr map itself out as far as being planar to our surface, which we are using for our canvas. So we know our canvas is 2048, 2048, which will always represent the uh, target area within our mapper. So if we planar map that, boom, uh, our objects are now, uh, as far as the idea of, of uh, rendering to texture goes, is relative to whatever image that we are going to be ultimately uh, uh, generating. So there's a one-to-one -one correlation between that. Uh, you know, if we decide to make things uh, weird, like, uh, <coughs> You know, generating a, uh, a 512 by 1024 that we're going to target towards a uh, 24 by 24, uh, uh, 2048 by 2048 uh, image plane, then it's going to come out elongated and all sorts of weird things happen. But with this correlation, it's not a pr an issue at all. So uh, we'll convert this over to an Apple Poly. And now if we render it out, everything is honky dory. Now we need to go to our material. So if we say, for example, select this material here, and we call this H-E-I-T-S-T -E map. Okay, we'll make this our height map, and we're going to assign that as the material to it. You can see that it's all uh, it's taken on the uh, diffused uh, base color. Um, um, the, you know, this the up here doesn't matter, so we'll get, you know, blind, blend is, is fine enough. we we'll render it out now, and you can see that it's actually starting to disappear into the background, which is set up for 50% gray, which is, you know, pretty close to, uh, to, to that information. Now, uh, starting at 3ds Max, you uh, begin with, uh, always with a set of default lighting solutions as to, uh, uh, placing elements onto the screen. Without them, obviously, nothing would get rendered, so, uh, Unfortunately, we this would also include things like uh, shadow information or, or whatever that uh, that would uh, leak into our height map, which we don't want to uh, avoid that. We need to set self-illumination of our material type to 100. So basically, our material that we apply to this is self-illumination, illuminating, uh, excluding any kind of lighting that we do put into the scene uh, that can cause random uh, problems. So now, if we go ahead and... Uh, render which kind of landed up off screen everything kind of disappears off our palette or our canvas let's zoom in super fine super close and see if we can actually see you can't actually see anything because everything is self illuminated based on the, the same t uh, texture so this is a good thing for us in this case because uh, this means that our material is now set up that it excludes any kind of outside type of influence as to shadows and lighting effects that could uh, more or less destroy our height map. Okay, so um, with this selected now, what we need is a material that would actually, um, we can apply to the surface, which will distinguish between the different uh, surfaces um, as to uh, uh, spatial differences. Okay, so uh, in this case, we need a texture map to assign. Oh, actually, let's, uh, let's go the long way around. Okay, we'll go down to our map section here, and this is our, uh, as you can see, is is where we can add different types of materials and or textures to our material. So uh, in this case, we want a gradient. Uh, being remember, uh, black is zero, white is one. So we want that variation in our depth as we apply the material. Okay, so we select the gradient, and up it pops. Uh, the top here actually defines what is this side as in height and this is this side as in depth and this is the 50 percent point between uh, the two objects <coughs> so if we actually had uh, deformation going in the other direction then over here would be the low up here would be the high and uh, this surface here would be our middle point okay so anyways we have uh, need to swap that around and then when we go ahead and uh, go to our perspective view, zoom out on that, and we go ahead and render that, indeed we get a gradient from top to bottom. So this is the kind of thing you want to see, uh, definitely as as uh, as uh, a variation in height. The, the thing is, though, now at this at, at this stage here, even though we have a gradient that is applied to our space, um, let's go ahead and render out a test. Okay, see how quick this we can do this. Okay, so we have our canvas selection selected, 
uh, we need to add a map. Now, quick conversation about this. Uh, once you get a handle on render to texture, this is the uh, and how you can apply, um, you know, self-illumination and stuff like this. You don't need all this other stuff down here because everything can be done to, using the complete map and and uh, and applied materials. So we can add that and. Uh, Okay, we're going to go to 2048, which is 2048, which is our target. And uh, if we go ahead and I'll render this to texture, you can see that indeed it's it's rendering out, but it's rendering out as to uh, as it to, to this being a planar surface. The uh, circle information is still there because it's obviously been mapped uh, to the UV mapping space, but it's not showing up. So. Uh, this is not going to work for us, and this is where we talk about the uh, the other little um, let's say uh, thing that uh, our unmap that uh, uh, that doesn't get a whole lot of fanfare, and that's the W space. The W space, okay, we have uh, U and V, obviously, which is X Y uh, for all intents and purposes, but there is a third direction called the W. The W is actually uh, so if we have U and we have V this would be our W. And since our gradient needs to become from our W position to define the, the differential in, in, in space, we need to change our UV mapping so uh, that it is applied on the W surface. So we have to select our planar uh, tool again. And using the gizmo, we need to project that and rotate that around so if you look down at the bottom there, it should come up to 90. And 90, hmm, we're the wrong way. We want er, we want our deformation to be in a W in the up position. So that that's correct as far as uh, our surface uh, goes. So now if we render it out, you can start to see a differential in between the in between the color information. You know, it's just there, but not quite. Now, why is that? Okay, so if we go over to uh, our gradient uh, map and we show it in the viewport, we can see that indeed we are getting depth information, but it's a very finite uh, amount of information as to mid being midpoint. So we need to kind of move this down a bit. Uh, well, we're straight to uh, to axes. Um, actually, I'm still in the projection tool. So if you if you try to select something and move it and it's not moving, your projection tool is still turned on. So we'll move that down a bit, and if we take a look again, definitely uh, a, a difference. But we're still not getting a definition definition in our height information. Remember, we're working in the W direction now, so which means we need to expand the overall height information that we want to include as part of part of our map. Now you can go to all the way to black, but it doesn't really matter, because once again, it's from zero to one so anything else in between uh, as long as you have uh, that amount of deviation between one then obviously uh, zero will always be flat so now if we go ahead and render out again all of a sudden our ringy ringos sort of pop out as they start to cut through the white information the, our gradient now goes from this side here in towards it based on one here down to zero down here so that's a good thing we're more or less there. We're almost home here. So we'll convert that over to an Evo Folia and then we'll run air test again. Okay, so we'll do a render. <laughs> Not quite what we expected. Remember, we're working in a W perspective. In other words, the texture is being applied from the front down. So this is actually what it looks like from the perspective of the channel information that we have given it. Okay, so this is once again a bit of a deviation that we needed to go on to. So if we go to unwrap and we open it, open it in our editor, this is how we are. Okay, <coughs> we need to talk about channel information a little bit here to get the idea of what's going on and how we can use whatever information is in UV mapping channel 1 and apply that to our texture image as uh, as a uh, a true texture image. In this case, you can see over here our our texture Im information is on map channel one. We can change this to any mapping channel that we want. That would correspond to whatever the UV mapping channel that we have set down here as the target for that material. So this material, B, 
being one is targeted to mapping channel number one and that's why it looks like, like, like that because it's giving us this true representation of the information that we have in hand. What we want to do is take whatever's in channel mapping ch channel number one and put that to a different channel, in this case channel number two. Now you're probably familiar with this type of technique when you're making things like light maps for example where you can planar everything onto a single image plane without disturbing whatever information is on channel one. So uh, in this case we're going to go ahead and abandon that and that gives us back to this planar image here and if it doesn't look like that you can go ahead and once again give it some planar information. Okay, convert this over to an Evo Poly. Let's double check that. So if we go to unwrap, open the editor, there's our height map. We go over and we say abandon, and this gives us this information. If you go copy, it will take whatever's in channel one and puts it into channel two. Now you would want to do that if uh, it's the first time. You have everything kind of laid out, but you need to lay things out, repack stuff. Uh, you don't want to start from scratch, so you would do a move and then do whatever adjustments that you want. Now, if we go, once again, go over to, uh, actually, we got to exit out of that, go back into it so it reinitializes it. Now, when we got our object selected, if we select this roll down here, we now have another channel, in this case, channel number two. So we select that to two. Now, what's happening is, is anything that is true in channel one as to, as to how things are mapped out and you know what types of materials to apply to it. Uh, it. It's going to pick up that information and it's just going to lay that back out on, into its new UV mapping space. So you can do like some really fancy detailing and, and ultimately uh, use extremely high detail models to create the type of uh, materials that you want. So, but moving forward, if we hit the render detection now, okay, uh, that didn't really work out too well, did it? That's because <coughs> Uh, once again, we're dealing with our friend, uh, UV mapping, yeah, you know, no, it's not you, it's not V, it's Mr. W that's causing us some problems here. Because when, we, when we're extracting this to texture, it doesn't know the order in which the connections are made. In other words, this planar surface, when we render that out, is actually front of the objects that uh, are behind it as to W space. So we need to change the W on our planar surface. So if we open this up back up in the editor and we just go ahead and select my surface space here and we select that, here's our W value. You can change the Y value. See, there's there goes our changes for our W or our, our V and there's our Y. We can change those, but we can, ch but we can change the W value, but you don't see anything. If we go to a negative value, now, let's see if this is going to work. Uh, and we render this to texture, make sure we're going in the right direction. There's our map. Because now we take what's in front of it and moved it in behind it. <coughs> so that gives us, uh, uh, we can do some more tweaking around and whatever, but more or less, this is a, this is a height map as relative to objects as to, 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 to two dimensional space. Now, to kind of finish things off here, hopefully we're not getting too long on this. Uh, I'll create another plane object, uh, blah, 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 plane. Uh, create that to the surface here. We'll make that the same size uh, resolution as our plate, 2048 by 2048. And that gives us our planar object. We're going to generate uh, generate mapping coordinates. We've got that. We're going to go to materials, and we're going to apply a simple material to that. And when we render this out, Nothing. Okay, so that's good. We're in good shape here. Okay, uh, now <coughs> let's see if I can find that map I just generated. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, actually found it. Okay, maps. I'm going to dump this onto, dump it onto the uh, to the diffuse channel. So when we bring this up, you can see that indeed we have our height map information filtered out. So if we go ahead and say for example drop this down and we do a swap. Now it kind of disappears if we render it out. Oops, come over here. You can see that uh, we have some de some <laughs> deformation going on here. Uh, <coughs> so if we bring that out information up even higher, let's see what's going on. Okay, we're actually going in the wrong direction. 
No, actually, that's the right direction. Um, just to kind of touch back on the idea of materials and textures, uh, it's going to be kind of this can be somewhat deceiving because you need uh, gloss and specularity uh, maps to, to define uh, how the shape is going to be formed. I think we kind of covered that at the beginning, but uh, all we're showing is is the the deformation, the extrusion based on on uh, on the default settings. But uh, let's actually ramp this up even more and see where we start losing things. And it's going up higher, up more. That's the limit. That's max. And you can start to see that we're getting some texture noise now into it, but we're still getting a, a good clean um, a clean sample going on here. So let's set this back to 30. Um, I'm going to set this to none. And what we're going to do is use X normal now to generate the test map. So we've got X normal set up, uh, height map to normal map. We'll select that and uh, we'll put our little Ringo set here and we're going to generate a normal map. Uh, this is probably be easy enough for you to figure out what's going on here. But um, hmm. it's a big map, so we really can't see what's going on here. We will in a moment, though, because I'm going to take this, save normal map out based on its stock setting. Uh, I'm going to set this to uh, yes. Okay, export selecting positive. And we're going to move that over there, move this up to here. We have no longer have any bump information on here, so we need to actually apply a shader. In this case, it will be the normal bump map shader. Um, don't just try to dump it into the uh, a normal map into the bump map slot. It's not going to work. Okay, so we're going to apply that. Uh, did that actually is that actually the map? Uh, I don't know. We'll find out in just a second here. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can just kind of see it. The the normal map going on uh, building up here. Okay, so uh, once again we're talking about. Uh, uh, it is now a, a data set of values. So if we ramp that up and we do another render, you can start to see it starting to form. Then we can go say, well, we all need a bit more than that. Okay, well, we can set up the multiplier. So we'll take whatever values in here and multiply it by whatever setting we, we gave it. So it's starting to pull out. Okay, mm, getting better. Okay, what about, uh, what if we go right to 99? Huh. Okay, now you can start to see the uh, the actual material information will start leading in, into it. But you can see how high we have this set up uh, as far as, as bumping from the surface goes. Um, we can certainly uh, add more height information into that by... Uh, do, 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 okay, um, uh, we need to go to our, our, our diffuse channel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, um, that height map we just ge generated and add that as an additional bump map. So now we're starting to get a little bit more, a little bit more um, definable control over it, to the point that uh, that the uh, the natural graininess of the image itself is starting to get into it. But you can see now that it definitely gives us a much cleaner normal map than we normally would get uh, by doing a projection mapping. So uh, I, I find that this uh, usually gives me the kind of details I want um, from a base standpoint. Okay, hold on. Let's set this back to one again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little too high. But you can see how much uh, how much flexibility just having having a clean map. Let's see if we can bring that image up. This gives us a lot, a, a lot of information that we can play with. If we had made this back surface black, we'd probably get rid of a lot of the noise. Uh, you certainly can do things like tile, make things tileable. The thing about tiling is that it will define the edge as uh, as part of the uh, as part of the height map information. So you might have to go in and and polish it up. But since it is a um, a texture image, we can now use Photoshop to go in and and clean this up so we can get. Uh, get everything to kind of uh, work the way that we want it to.